Here we go again, you guys. Yes, there's still more to have a look at in another 10 90s sitcoms that I bet you probably maybe definitely forgot about. Number one, The Creatives, BBC Two, 1988. This 90s sitcom starred Jack Docherty and Murray Hunter as Ben Gray and Robbie Fraser, the creative brains working at an advertising agency that's frankly seen better days. This ran until 2000 across two series and I do not remember it one little bit not even hunter's mega sideburns good sniff yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean the sniff seems kind of naked on its own you know yeah give it an ah mm. Mm. <laughs> done can a man be a secretary oh hi darling answer me that ben i hope you don't mind me asking but like is she like yeah that? she is as passionate as that in the sack yeah. <laughs> and the creative team responsible for this advert also wrote the Bennett's Lager campaign. You think of emphasising who? Yeah, well, wouldn't you? I thought it should be your. Patterson soups for your voting. <laughs> Number two, Cannon and Ball's Playhouse. This is a bit of a rarity from 1990. Two episodes of this were made, and it was supposed to be six episodes, but in parallel they were also making a series called Plaza Patrol, again with Cannon and Ball, which I have covered in a previous video, and that was favoured over Cannon and Ball's Playhouse, so they just stopped making it. Bobby Ball played Norman Tubby in this, a reporter who worked for the newspaper at which Tommy, playing Ken Osborne, was the manager. Please, just do something. All right, let's have a look at the little monster. Well, don't let it out! <laughs> You'd be quite happy living in the bottom of your drawer in the no. It's all right, it's all right. I'll protect you. Are you Mr Osborne? Me? No, no, I'm Norman. <laughs> Julia Parker Smith, Mr Robert Maxwell. <laughs> Ken Osborne. Good morning, Mr Osborne. Number three, Days Like These, 1999 ITV. This was a British remake of that 70s show, apparently. It starred Anne Bryson from the Philadelphia adverts, among others, and it was cancelled after only six episodes, and having watched it, I can, I can see why. Don't worry about it, just stay cool and keep moving. No snacks, no small talk. Oh, and above all, don't get sucked into my dad's hair. No, I didn't. Yeah, I remember. You said not to say anything to worry. <laughs> Hey, let's remember what's important here, folks. I'm such a helpless idiot. Stop talking, Sarah Jane, and keep jiggling up and down that jumpsuit. <laughs> oh, Doctor, I need to give me your sonic screwdriver, quick. Body gate, body gate. Michael. Well, sitting here is thirsty work. Anybody for a glass of squash? Oh, yeah, me. You sit down, I'll get yours. Number four, Doctor at the Top, BBC One, 1991. Robin Nedwell and George Layton starred in this 90s sitcom about the antics of a group of doctors. It was based on books by Richard Gordon. The adaptation was co-written by Bill Odey, who wasn't too surprised at the fact that it failed miserably. He would often refer to it as Doctor Down the Drain. Did a couple of varicose veins on Saturday morning and then whizzed down to Chichester to look at a boat. You've already got a boat. I fancy something bigger. A place in France, or ski in the winter, sail in the summer. But look what you've got. Yeah, a massive overdraft, a huge mortgage, and a clapped out Volvo. Oh, yes, Professor. I said to come straight to your office. But where the hell is she? I can do without all this. You know, I've got enough on my mind. I've got a budget meeting with a hospital manager at 9.30. Uh, Dick, I'm sorry to disturb you, but could I have a quick word? Not just now, Lionel. I don't have the time. I'm very upset, Dick. I keep hearing these rumours. I've got to talk to you. I'll tell you when it comes home to you that we're getting old. When you're going out with a girl and you're older than her father. <laughs> My God, that's a shaker. Well, it was the first time. I'm getting used to it now. Number five, The Legacy of Reginald Perrin, BBC One, 1996. A whole decade after Leonard Rossiter's sad demise, this 90s sitcom focused on the last will and testament of Reginald Perrin and the convoluted things the beneficiaries would have to do in order to get their lolly didn't go down as well as the original series, of course, largely due to the fact that Rossiter, for obvious reasons, just wasn't in it. This time, this good man has gone for good. <laughs> David and Prue Harris-Jones have come all the way from West Wales. Well, that's very kind of them. Now they can go all the way back to West Wales. What brings you to this neck of the woods? Not your usual stomping ground, I'd have thought. Well, the same as you, of course. The letter. For 13 years, I satisfied Mr. McCrombie's every whim. <laughs> sure you did. Well, it is now my duty to read out Mr. Perrin's will. 
to you. She has to read this out, although it embarrasses her, while also secretly pleasing her because she's quite vain. <laughs> Otherwise, all the money will go to the Battersea Dogs Home. Number six, the liver birds. What? That seventies, you moron! I can hear Rupert saying in the distance. Well, it's sixties and seventies, Rupert, actually, and nineties, actually, Rupert, because BBC One revived the show in 1996, reuniting Beryl and Sandra, consoling each other over their respective failed marriages. It only ran for one series, as it wasn't terribly popular, sadly. But it was nice to see it back, though, for a little while. I'm thinking of going on a diet. It's not good to diet at your age, Sandra. Well, that's full of restrictions. Restrictions and compromises. You were pregnant? Well, I thought I was pregnant. For how long? Six days. He's too far gone to remember anything. I'm not coming in, I'm just delivering her. My poor heart has nearly ended its life with the worry of it, and God knows where I'd have been then. By the law of averages, you'd have been dead. Did, did you not have children? My daughter decided against children on the grounds that she didn't want any. If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be first in line for every new upload. There's hundreds of videos packed full of clips and tidbits about TV shows from times gone by. Literally hundreds. I mean, just look at them all. All organised into playlists on the homepage so you can easily find what you want. The foot of our stairs, the number one place for 70s, 80s, 90s and 2000s UK TV nostalgia. <laughs> Number 7, See You Friday, ITV 1997. No footage for this one, sadly, but it starred Neil Pearson, and he narrated the Poddington Peas, by the way, and Joanna Roth as two lovers who meet on the last night of their Greek holiday. He's from Newcastle and she's from London, though, and it seems impossible to maintain such a long-distance relationship. Number 8, Singles, ITV, 1988-1991, ITV. Never heard of it personally, or at least I think I've never heard of it. It looks a little bit familiar, but I'm getting deja vu now with all these videos. Anyway, this one starred Susie Blake and Eamon Boland as a couple of singletons playing the dating game and frequenting a singles bear. What are you doing? He's off to the carpet again. Well, why does he want the carpet? Says it has sentimental value. A carpet can't have sentimental value. No, it could for him. Sooner turn funny than desperate. Well, what do you mean? I'm not going to a singles club, Jackie. Oh, why not? Because it's full of cranks, weirdos and freaks. Our mistake was getting married in the first place. If you think that, why'd you still wear your wedding ring? Because it helps me to get a better cut of meat at the butcher's. <laughs> Look, I'm all right. You weren't all right last night, though, were you? Who told you about that? Your mother. Interfering old bat. Number nine, Boys Unlimited. James Corden. Am I allowed to say I can't stand this guy? I can have an opinion on my own YouTube channel, can't I? That's allowed. I cannot stand this guy. Well, he starred in this 90s sitcom on Channel 4 in 1999, which was a six-parter about the ups and downs of an aspiring boy band. I never saw it. Doubt I've missed anything as a result, to be fair. And number 10, and people are probably going to say, I remember this one, but here goes anyway, because we've run out of 90 sitcoms now. This is the last one before I do a video about the really, really obvious ones. Number 10 is Spaced, Channel 4, 1999 to 2001. Simon Pegg and Jessica Stevenson star as Tim Bisley and Daisy Steiner, respectively. They are two 20-somethings who live in London and they have a chance meeting in a cafe whilst they're flat hunting. They find a pretty cheap one, but it wants a professional couple as applicants, so they decide that, in spite of the fact they don't know each other, they play the part of a respectable couple to get the flat. Do you sit here? <laughs> Any luck? No, yeah. It's, it's early days yet. I didn't see that one. <laughs> Spacious two-bedroom apartment, fully furnished, £90 a week. You prefer um, a tight-legged cotton pant as opposed to the boxer. Is, is all this really necessary? Well, yes. What if I asked a number of intimate personal questions? Tim got a miniature drum kit for his fifth birthday. You are. What's through there? Daisy, this is Brian. Oh, well, hi. Do you rent downstairs? What do you mean, am I gay? 
And there you have it. Ten more 90s sitcoms that you might well have forgotten about. Did I miss any out? You let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends, and all that good stuff. Bye for now.